Hello, folks. How are you doing? This is Captain Mark Action Stevenson. I'm a boat captain, and I want to welcome you to From the Wheelhouse. You know, this is probably our sixth season that we've done this, but we've been off the air for about a year or more. I've been doing quite a few other things, all having to do with the maritime industry, but I'm so glad to be back into your homes and giving you information. We used to do this, this show, um, focus on what it's like to be a boat captain from the various boats that we drive on the Great Lakes and the waterways of Canada. But now we're taking a new direction. We're going to talk about jobs, jobs, and jobs and more jobs. I want to educate you on the wonderful industry called the maritime industry. That's right. And all of you need to know this. This is a live call-in show. A live call-in show. And this is, uh, the number is right there on the bottom of the screen, 312-738- 1060 so you can call in right now and get in the queue so that we can catch your question or your comment we'd love to hear from you that's for sure i know that many of the things that we've been talking about over the last year are the struggles that the small guy has had in the industry trying to work with one or two boats or several boats but just starting with one boat to offset their expenses so that they can operate a boat in freedom. But there are so many rules and regulations that are antiquated. We're operating with, with 19th century and 20th century laws, and this is the 21st century, and, um, and we're, we're not catching up. Also, the websites. Um, somebody told me that internet is not going to disappear. There's no, not going anywhere. And so the websites that allow people to rent a boat for just a birthday party, a bachelor party, a bachelorette party, or just going out with their family, those boats are now made available to you um, through many different websites. If you just Google boat. Um, boat rentals in Chicago and boat rental captains as well because you get to hire your own captain. But today I'm going to start off with talking about the marine careers. Marine careers. Now, one of the best sites that I've ever seen that can show you, and I can't show you everything of this site, but it's called Marine Insight. And there it is right there. Marine Insight. If you go to this website, they're going to talk about the various careers in the marine industry, the maritime industry. And I want you to know that this is a great, great opportunity to find out about these jobs. Let's, let's just scroll down a little bit and find out some things. Here's some, some jobs require a lot of education and some jobs require no education, no training. And I want you to know that you can get into the maritime industry just like Captain Mark. I started by cleaning the heads. Those are toilets. I started as the best Head cleaner that they, I know, I know it doesn't quite sound right, but <laughs> the best head cleaner in the business. Here's a couple of jobs that you might be interested in knowing about. Marine engineers, naval architects. Um, these, these are great jobs that you can get into um, with some level of training. However, I also want you to know that all you have to really do is do like I did and get on the boats as a deckhand. So, here's some more jobs. Bosun, oil, oil driller, ordinary seaman. And we have callers that are calling in right now. I'm going to get right with you. I don't want to go through all of these jobs, but I can tell you, if you're interested in the maritime industry, if you are interested in working on boats, next season when it comes up, will be too late. You have to start in February, January. You have to start the process then. And Captain Mark is going to help you to accomplish that. That is right. Now, we already have a caller, and I'd like to take that caller welcome to From the Wheelhouse. Caller? Hello? Hello, caller. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Yeah, my name is... Uh... Paul Williams and I'm a I'm a boat owner, 
and you know I'm trying to figure out is there a way because my boat is you know it's of some size 34 36 feet in that general area mm -hmm. and I know that people can use their boats to uh, monetize that by being able to lease them but I know that there are a number of rules and impediments that makes it uh, a little difficult for boat owners to uh, utilize their boat in that manner and I know there's a demand for that sort of uh, boating here in Chicago. So do you have any advice for a guy like me who would like to figure out how to uh, better monetize his, his boat? Because, you know, you may, you know, you got a, you got a, a summer season that deals with maybe a uh, 100 days and you use it for 20. So you got 80 days that you can monetize the boat. And I'm trying to figure out how do I go about doing that? Well, uh, yes, sir. There, thank you for your call. Appreciate it. There are a number of ways that you can make money, but it's only one way to do it right. The Coast Guard has defined it as what they call bare boat charter, um, the bare boat industry, meaning that a person can rent a boat and the person has total control and total ownership during that period of the rental. And that also means that no one can tell them where to go, what to do. They can they can do whatever they want to with that boat. And they if they don't know how to drive the boat, they can hire their own captain as well. You see, we call it the rental boat sector now. And when I say we, I mean the owners and the operators. Um, we are, are, are trying to to tell you that you can do this for anywhere up to 12 of you and 12 of your friends. That's 13 people. You and 12 of your friends can rent a boat as long as you are not charging money to ride on the boat and the money that you're collecting, people can, people can put in money to pay for drinks and pay for food and so forth like that, but you, you can't do it as a profit. In other words, you can't rent a boat for $1,000 and turn around and sell tickets and rent it out for $2,000. Um, you, can't, you can't do that. However, the first thing that you need to do is to go to the IDNR, that's the Illinois, Illinois Department of Natural Resources, their website has an application where you can get a sticker for a rental boat. And that costs us uh, just $38 right now. $38 will make you legal as a rental boat operator once your boat is properly registered like everyone else. Next thing you need to do is to pay the city of Chicago's uh, vendor uh, called West Track. They charge $700 just to uh, call yourself a rental boat. We've been trying to figure out what exactly do you get for that. You don't even get a sticker. Um, but and, and I haven't seen any of the benefits that you get from that either. And we'll be doing a show on that because we're going to ask uh, people from West Trek to send a representative to talk about what do you get for your money. That $700 is another fee. Um, in order to operate, a lot of people will just go ahead and open up a website and start running ads on Craigslist. Those things you, you can't do until you also have a City of Chicago business license. So those, those three basic things are, that's your starting point. Now there's a lot of rules that you have to follow and equipment that you need to have on that vessel. And um, when we've been talking about the fault finders um, that, that find fault in absolutely everything that a person tries to do. But this is a capitalistic society and you should have the right to monetize your boat, Paul. You should have the right to be able to use your own boat for 20 days out the year, like you say. And what about the other 80 days when you're at work, when you're in your office? What do you do then? Does the boat just sit there and collect spider webs? Well, that's not quite fair either. But if you have a good safe boat, you can rent it out. 
and um, you are not going to be required to have a what they call a COI, a certificate of inspection. That's for people that want to have larger numbers of, of passengers on their vessel and they want to sell tickets and so forth. But I think you just want to rent your boat. Now that's a long answer, but does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, I might have a question as it regards to as a, as a rental boat owner, I can't drive it myself. I got to use a captain. I understand. And then, are there any sort of a? Uh, I understand that the coast guard can be pretty tough on you too. You know everything. How does that work? Well, the requirement is that you, as the owner, must provide a list of captains that are qualified, in your opinion, to drive your boat. You see, everyone that has a captain's license can't drive every type of boat. So you have the right to, to vet them and check them out and take a look at their driving skills. But you are required to give a, a list of... From what we know so far, you have to give a list of 10 captains to a renter and let them have free choice to choose what captain. Here's where the problem lies, though. Who the heck knows the difference between Captain A, B, C, or D? Who knows the differences between these captains? All you are given is a list of names as a renter, and you don't know if this guy has good communication skills, um, if he dresses properly, he or she dresses properly. Um, you don't know anything about the captains, but, but the owner is required to let you have free will to choose a captain and free will to determine where you want to go with that vessel as well. Okay. But thank you. Okay. One more thing, Paul. The Coast Guard wants you to do a check-in and check-out list. It's, it's like what you do when you go rent a car. You do a walk around and see if there's any scratches on the boat. You make sure you go inside the boat and take a look. Your captain is doing this for you to take a look at the safety equipment, Paul, to make sure that all of the safety equipment is on that vessel in case in the unlikely event that something does happen. So that's why you hire a professional to do this. Uh, very seldom is there someone that comes along who wants to rent a boat who is qualified to drive a boat. We have a, 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 a phrase that we use, a little saying that um, we use that everyone, absolutely everyone wants to be the captain until the storm arrives. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your call. Appreciate you. Now, I want to give you my contact information because some of you are just gutless and some of you are just lazy. You're sitting on the couch right now and you are afraid to call in or either you just don't want to call in. You don't think that you can get through, but you can get through. I want you to write down this telephone number and my email address. You can contact me at shipmastermark at gmail.com. And yes, this is my cell phone number, 312-437-2230. I'll give this to you again, so if you didn't catch it this time, I'll make sure that you catch it next time. We have another caller. Welcome to today's show. Welcome to From the Wheelhouse. Good evening, Captain Mark. I have a, a question uh, regarding uh, renting a boat. Um, what if I wanted to, because uh, I was thinking about maybe having a party for my birthday uh, next year during the summer, and I wanted to know how does one go about uh, renting a boat if you have, you know, maybe about 12 people or, or maybe even less, because the only boats I see are like those, uh, those cruise uh, ship boats that take out many people. Is there a way that... Uh, you know, a person like myself could just rent a boat and um, with me not even knowing how to drive. So how would I even begin to uh, rent a boat? Well, that's another good question. You know, with the larger boats, like the, you're talking about, like the big boats you see on Navy Pier? Yes. Okay. If you, if you want to have a birthday party or something like that on one of those boats, you have to share those decks 
with other people. They may have multiple decks. One of them has, I think, about five decks. And you, if you only have 10 or 12 people in your group, now you have to share that deck with everyone else. You have to get off in your own corner and have your own party by yourself. And I'm, I'm presuming from your question that you don't want to do that, right? No. Well, no, it's a private. I want to have a private thing. Okay, and it doesn't surprise me because this is the evolution of the business, the evolution of the rental boat business. People no longer want to get on these big boats and share that space with strangers, and rightfully so. You might want to do something with your coworkers from your company or, or, or do something with your friends that, you, that you're not um, so eager to share with everyone else. So here's what you want to do. You want to go online and look up Chicago rental boats, Chicago rental boats. Now, I'm not going to um, refer you to any one specifically because there are many, many of them, and we're going to have some of these owners on subsequent shows. So make sure you tune in every Friday, and I'm quite sure you're going to find out some of the people that you might be interested in renting their boats. Um, and if you have a boat, that you are renting and you'd like to be on this show, make sure that you grab a pen and that you are, are contacting me so that I could make sure if I can get you into the queue as one of our guests. And we won't have a guest today. This is our first show. And, um, and by the way, I need to stop right now and thank Captain Jim Meskel. Captain Mesco has been sitting in for me and the last two weeks. It was the first two weeks of this show while I was on vacation. And I want to thank Captain Jim Mesco so, so much. He did an outstanding job in bringing a couple of fine guests. Last week, he talked about the Christmas tree ship. And before that, the, the week before that, he had a guest uh, that came on, a young lady, and, and you ladies better know the doors are wide open. We're going to have her back. Her name is Lauren. I can't recall her last name at this second. However, we're going to have her back as she was very, very exciting, very intelligent. But thanks again. Kudos goes out to you, Captain Jim. You rock. We have another caller, and I hope that I answered your question. Do you have any, any anything else? Uh that, that was it, sir. Oh, one, one more thing. Um, when I call those, uh, when I Google those, will they, those different um, boat companies, will they be able to br provide someone who's experienced in driving like a captain? So do I have to have a licensed captain to drive uh, the boat? You better have a licensed captain. Now, if you don't... Um you might have, like I said, everyone wants to be the captain until the storm arrives. <laughs> you better have a licensed captain. But the rental boat sector, rental boats are required to, uh, to give you a list of captains. If you cannot drive the boat yourself and cannot uh, convince the owner that you have the ability, you don't have to have a licensed captain to do it. You don't have to even uh, have a license to be a captain on, on rental boats. But the fact is, is, we believe as professionals, we believe, of course, that a licensed captain that has the training and experience is the safest way to go. What do you want to do? Save a couple of dollars and try and do it yourself or get, get someone that says they have been on a boat before? It's not like driving a car. And when you run into some problems, you want to be able to have an experienced person. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Our next caller, welcome to From the Wheelhouse. I'm excited. <laughs> How about you? Good evening, Captain Mark. I hope you have a good day. I have a question. When you rent a boat and you're out in the middle of the lake, can you get away with certain things? Like, if, 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 say if you want to get buck naked, have some wild <laughs> sex on your deck, whatever. Can you get away with that? You can't do that in, like, in a parked car, in a, in, uh, like in the park or something like that. Can you do certain things like that on the lake? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I want to shut up. I want to hang up on listening to your response. Can you do? <laughs> can you get butt naked on a boat? Can you get butt naked on a boat in the middle of the lake? Let me put it this way. 
Over the last 40 years of, uh, 42 years of working in this industry, I haven't been a boat captain all of that time. Um, most, of the, most of the years I was a deckhand. I've seen it all three times every which way you can imagine. And to answer your question directly, yes, you can get butt naked on a boat if that's what you wish to do. Because you own that boat during the period of rental. You can do whatever you want to do on that boat. And as long as you are not, um, not involving yourself with public indecency, then um, I don't see any problem in doing that because when you're out in the middle of the lake, as you say, there's not going to be anybody around with the type of eyes or binoculars even that could see what you're doing. So you can do whatever you want to do. That's one of the pleasures of renting your own boat. If you rent your own boat, you can do it. Ever the heck you want to do. Here's another example, a little bit milder, but still, still a good example. Some people that have companies do company events. Now, they don't want everyone, and the public that is, to know what they're doing. And they don't want to let people see just how they partake in libation. They don't want, they don't want the public to see them drinking and drinking and, and having a good time. They want to have a professional appearance. Many of these people are very professional. These are professionals. But they want to cut loose once in a while. So sometimes it's time to sit your cell phone down and stop it. Just stop it and do whatever you want to do. And don't take any pictures and don't record, you know. Um, so, yes, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. We have another caller. Welcome to today's show. Hi, uh, uh, Captain. This is Captain Mark. Hey, Captain Mark, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, sir? How may I help you? I'm doing well, too. Uh, so thank you for the information. Um, I am curious about getting into the industry, and I've heard uh, how much fun it can be and how lucrative it can be as a business, but I keep hearing all of these um, nightmare stories about uh, uh, boaters being pulled over by the Coast Guard and, um, you know, the boat kind of just being left stranded and, you know, patrons can't get their money back, so I'm kind of conflicted. Uh, do you mind shedding some light on the matter? Well, I can tell you this. The United States Coast Guard, uh, the sector here in Chicago, um, Chicago Lake, Michigan, has a new commander. His name is Commander Randy Preston. And he's only been with us for about four months so far. So um, the jury has, is still out. Um, we have not seen we have, we, we've not seen how he's going to deal with um, illegal charters, they call them. We want illegal charters to be gone as professionals. We want the guy that just wants to take his boat and put it on a website or a Craigslist and rent it out without going through the safety procedures and having the correct safety equipment on his boat. However, we want the Coast Guard to know that we are watching very carefully uh, the activities of the new commander, Randy Preston. We are watching very, very carefully to see what type of people that they are after. Are they after the professionals? Or are they after um, just every Joe Blow who gets a boat? I suggest that if you want to monetize, I, I assume you're a boat owner, is that correct? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. If you're a boat owner, you have one boat, two boats, or what? As of now, I have one. Okay. If you have one boat, I suggest that you start involving yourself with organizations like the International Shipmasters Association, with the Association of, of Rental Boat Owners and Operators. You need to surround yourself with other people who are already doing it because it's not a nightmare if it's done correctly. It's just that the rules that we have right now are so unclear and so um, just ambiguous that we have such a time trying to keep up. But thank goodness that the guy that's following us on this television show, Congressman Danny Davis, his show, um, you should be asking him also 
at the same telephone number, Congressman Davis has appointed um, a, a committee, the, the Maritime Advisory Committee, and he is working very hard to update the rules and, and regulations. You see, the Congress makes the law, the Coast Guard enforces the law, and the judges interpret the law. Now, we only have a minute left, but thank you for your call. Appreciate you. I want to give you thank my you so contact much, Mark. information again. My contact information is right on the screen. Make sure that you write this down. Shipmastermark at Gmail. I answer all emails, and my phone is never filled up. My voicemail is never filled up. I take pride in answering all of my calls. And so if you didn't get a chance today to ask me a question, make sure that you do that um, by contacting shipmastermark at gmail or just call me directly at 312-437-2230. Again, I am so pleased to be back with you, the public. We're going to make sure that each and every one of you know that you can get into the maritime industry and it's plenty of money in it. There, and, and you big boys that's in the business that's worried about these small companies coming along, there's enough money for everybody. Trust me. There's enough money for everyone to make a good living. All you have to do is remember that we live in the United States of America where capitalism rules the day. And we can make sure that we have you in a position to make a living in the maritime industry. Thanks again. I'll see you next week.